I love that it's a platform that encourages conversation. So it's not a one way talk fest. You get to hear from the audience and you get to hear from your potential clients. Tracy, welcome to the call. Thanks. How you doing? Good, good. Before we kick in, I'm just going to read a couple of things here because they're absolutely mind blowing. A bit of your, a bit about your bio. Sure. You're the uh, a podcast pioneer in Australia. You started the first ever panel podcast in Australia. You're a judge for the Oz Web Industry Awards, the Oz Marketing Awards, the Business Book Awards. So I'm hoping you're not going to be judging me too much <laughs> during this presentation. Um, we've got. Uh, you launched the iPhone into Australia. Tell me about that. How did that happen? Yeah. Okay. So that was a long time ago, right? So um, I was working for Telstra at the time as part of the retail channel. Yep. And uh, yeah, we. I think I did the first store at Maroochydore. I was there with the, the lineups out the doors and the balloons and the crazy clapping and everything that used to go on when you bought an Apple product. Yeah. Um, and I think we had people lining up from about 3 a.m. in Maroochydore in sunny Queensland, if you know what that sleepy little town's like, which is beautiful. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it was crazy. It was great fun those, those days. Well, I mean, I almost forget the time before iPhones. I have to think back on, on the time when you launched it. That's incredible. And that's the first part of your intro. 2008, I think maybe earlier. Okay. I should know that date. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's I've been a doing it for 30 years. It blows I mean, in. <laughs> there were dinosaurs roaming the streets and people were homeless everywhere Indeed. without shoes before the Indeed. iPhone came along. So you got it. You've nailed now, it. Now now we're in digital the digital world. Um, exactly. So you're also um the only CPM in Australia, the, the certified practicing marketer, uh, who is a small business owner. Why why is that the case? Yeah, boy, did I have to fight for that one. So typically um the governing body for marketers in Australia is AMI, Australian Marketing Institute. Yep. And typically the people that go for CPM status, so certified practicing marketers, have a bunch of university degrees behind them and they're typically working for a corporate. Yeah, okay. I haven't worked for a corporate for over a decade and I never went through uni for my marketing degrees. So they didn't know what to do with me and it completely confuddled them. Um, but I think eventually after some of the things I was able to kind of list as achievements, they went, yeah, okay, we'll let you through. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, now we're here to talk about Clubhouse today. Now you ran a Clubhouse marathon, a global Clubhouse marathon that ran for 36 hours at 55 speakers across 20 countries. You had 20, 200, oh, sorry, 2,300 people show up for International Women's Day. Now, my first question is, what is Clubhouse? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how did you make this happen? Yeah. So Clubhouse is an audio only social platform. So just like another Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, but it's audio only. And because I love podcasting, as soon as I heard that, I went ding, 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 I'm in. Um, and I've spent a bunch of time kind of figuring it out. So Clubhouse itself is still quite new. So it's just about to click over 12 months old. It's still in beta mode. So it's only available for people who are iPhone users. And um, yeah, you go in, you set up rooms, which is not dissimilar to setting up a podcast. And then people show up and you have a chat. It's what I really like about it, apart from the audio platform. So you've got that um, conversation happening and people can multitask because it's audio. So you don't need to be dressed to the nines to uh, be in Clubhouse. But I love that it's a platform that encourages conversation. So it's not a one-way talk fest. You get to hear from the audience and you get to hear from your potential clients. And how, how does that work when you've got 2,300 people all listening in to 55 speakers? How do you manage that? So yeah, carefully. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. Because what I'm imagining, because I'm, I'm, I'm not an iPhone user. I've, I'm one of the Samsung people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I can talk to you anymore, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> I know this interview's over. We're done. <laughs> We're done. Uh, so how do you, well, one, because that's, that's the point, isn't it? It's only for iPhone users at the moment while it's in, while it's in beta, but yeah. 
how do you, so if you're lucky enough to build an audience like you had with 2,300 people, which is fantastic, how do you then make sure that people aren't speaking over the top of each other and how, how does it flow? Yeah. So I'll, to clarify, the 2,300 weren't all in the room at the same time. So oh, they okay. would come and go. Oh. So what what how I structured it was that because we had 55 speakers and we had 20 plus countries and it was 36 hours straight, yeah. I mean, I'm a machine, but I wasn't <laughs> up for 36 hours so, straight. So you so were there we, the whole time for the 36 hours? I was logged in, but, <laughs> you know, I may have napped occasionally. <laughs> there was water involved. It was okay. Um, so we handed off the room every 60 minutes. So every oh, hour wow. we had a new speaker with a different topic and basically wow. we placed the clock around the world. So, um, you know, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. was one topic, 9 a.m. to 10 p 10 a.m., 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. And we just swapped topics over. So what happens with Clubhouse is you get what's called a hallway, which is like where all of your rooms, where all the conversations show up. So the longer a room is going, I won't get too technical, but part of the algorithm, we'd all be familiar with algorithms with social media, part of the algorithm with Clubhouse is the longer a room's been open, the higher it starts to appear on your newsfeed or your hallway so people would just come and go it's think of it like a radio station right you can just kind of spin the dial and then suddenly you're in that radio station so the same thing happens with clubhouses you can kind of just turn up and you can yeah, be well. way through a conversation so the way clubhouse works is you kind of have three tiers so you have the top tier which is your speakers and they're the ones that have a live mic and can be having a conversation you have a tier underneath that of people who follow the speakers so they're just in the audience and i liken them to do you remember the days when we could get to in-person events and you would pay maybe a little bit more to sit in that front row and maybe do yeah. a meet and greet with the speakers or whatever so that's like you're followed by tier and then you've got a tier oh, wow. just the audience so if you're in the audience you can click a button that says raise your hand and the speakers then know that colin's got something to say and we invite them up to the stage and you get to have a chat so that's kind of how it works yeah great and so why would i mean it sounds i mean i, I love podcasting uh, and i love doing video interviews like this but um i i'm trying to work out why I would use this in my business. I can see the value of, I mean, everyone's talking about Facebook and Instagram and, you know, you've got to be top of Google for SEO. And so what, well, one, why would I want this? Why would I want to be using this platform? Mm. And to what, um, how do I find the time to get in there? Or, or what, what am I supposed to be doing when I do get in there? Yeah. Uh, look, great question, because we all have such competing priorities, don't we? So the big thing for me is why would you want to be there? I think like any other social media platform or any other part of your marketing, it needs to have a strategy. So I'll tell you what I do. I'm a small business owner myself. So typically I use Clubhouse in a couple of ways. One, I use it to crowdsource research. So I run a room every week about small business tech tips because I write about technology for small business. So people come into that room, they tell me what they're using. Hey, I just found this call app that does this. I've been on this website that does that. Or they'll ask me a question. So I crowdsource my research. So then I can go away, I write a blog, I can do a podcast, I can do a video, I do a monthly free webinar about my favorite top 10 tech tips for the month. It's all crowdsourced. So I get to say, hey, Colin was in the room last week and he recommended X. So I give the kudos back. So that's the first way I use it is to crowdsource my research. Second way I use it is to develop authority. If you're hosting a room and you're talking about your topic, then people coming in, come in to hear from you. And the nice thing about Clubhouse is quite similar to podcasts. You can't fudge your authority, right? So if you ask me a question in the moment, and it should be about something I know about. If I'm like, uh, uh, you kind of know you're not on the right person. But if I can be spitting valuable information backwards and forwards and people are interested in that topic, they'll then find an off-ramp or a way to connect with you outside of Clubhouse. They'll connect with you on Instagram. They'll DM you. They'll go to LinkedIn, whatever their thing is. So it's an authority piece, second of all, the way for me. The third one is JVs and partnerships. Because it is a global conversation, 
I've made some amazing connections now, not just nationally, but internationally. So quite like a podcast when you can reach out to someone and go, hey, I've got this podcast and I'd love you to be on it. And you would not have a reason to reach out to that person any other time. I can now say to people, hey, I'm running a clubhouse room on such and such. Chances are they're going to turn up because the the partnership nature of it means that we get to share that base. So I'm going to bring people to your audience that you wouldn't normally be in front of, and you're going to do the same for me. So it's a triple win. It's a win for you. It's a win for me. And it's a win for our client base. So there are three of the ways that I use it and three of the ways that I tend to recommend people think about how they could get the most value out of Clubhouse. How do you make time for it? We're small business owners. We just do, right? We just do. One of the neat things about Clubhouse, because it is audio only, um, it's not uncommon to hear people dialing into chat when they're driving or they're walking the dog or they're sitting at soccer with the kids or they're peeling the veggies or so, you know, it just seems to fit in with the rest of our lives. Yeah. Okay. So where, where would you start? Like as a small business owner listening to this or watching this, where do you recommend they start? Yeah. So a couple of things, one jump in and give it a crack. Um, jump into a few different rooms. So you will it's a bit like podcasting. You'll kind of find rooms about stuff that you just like, about topics that you're interested. It's just happening. So jump into a few rooms, have a listen, and then host a room like fairly soon after you get in there because it's in that hosting a room and inviting people up to speak and having those conversations that you'll start to see the value in the platform. So it's one of those things that you've kind of just got to jump in with both feet. And once you've been in there and you set, you start to see the possibilities um, because it's going to be slightly different for each business owner, right? So once you begin to see the possibilities, then you can jump back out and go, okay, where does this fit now with my strategy? You know, I think one of the most amazing ways, if you have a podcast, I can see such such immense value for once the pod goes, podcast goes live to then have a clubhouse room to talk about that podcast episode. Because yeah. now you're engaging your audience that listen to the podcast to actually come and have a conversation about that episode. So, you oh, know, wow. potentially you get the guest on, that you were chatting to whatever, but you're, you're further immersing your audience and making them stickier to the podcast because you're giving them another avenue to um, examine, contribute, to become part of the community. Yeah, fantastic. So what you're saying is I've got to get an iPhone now. <laughs> you wouldn't be the first person I know of that's just gone out and bought an iPhone 6 for a couple of hundred bucks just to sign up. <laughs> because it sounds it does sound fantastic uh i so have an invite if you want to give it if you want to go buy yourself an iphone 6 i have an invite well that's that's the other interesting point we should bring up is the invites because you can't actually access it without an invite at the moment can right. you yeah so it's it's just a bit of an oversubscribed model right and what they're yep. doing in my opinion is they're throttling the growth yeah the biggest thing that will bring clubhouse down is if their servers can't hold the capacity. Ah, okay. So, so that's if you think why about it, like a growth. website or something like that, their servers need to be holding the capacity. Ah. So if they suddenly open up to Android and go, right, it's a free for all right now, I can tell you their servers would collapse. Well, and it's almost, I mean, Clubhouse is the right name for it, isn't it? When you've got a you can only be invited in, otherwise the bouncer's going to kick you out. Exactly. Like it's, well, you, can't, pretty, you just can't get in. You're the, just can't get you're in. the person yeah. in the lineup at the door going, how long do I have to wait? Yeah, not in those shoes, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. Well, where should we go to find out more? About Clubhouse? About Clubhouse or to find out any information about what you've, you've talked about today. Yeah, cool. So look, I'm all over socials. I'm kind of ubiquitous. I'm just there. Um, you can check me out on LinkedIn at Tracy Sheen. I'm at Tracy, the digital guide on Facebook. My website is the digital Um, you know, you can basically send up a smoke signal and it will, it will land at me. If you want to check out clubhouse and you've got an iPhone, then you need to download the app. 
Um, it's Clubhouse drop-in audio, and then you need to beg, borrow, or steal a invite from someone to get in. Um, but it's well worth just having, spending a little bit of time and having a bit of a look. And then, like I said, pop back out, pull your head above the ground a bit, see where it fits with your strategy, and then dive back in again. Yeah, great. Well, I'm on the way. We're going to have to close this off now because I'm going to go get an iPhone and we're going to, Excellent. <laughs> I'm going to claim that invite. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Great right. to chat. Great. Thanks very much. Talk to you soon, Tracy. Thank you. Bye. Wow. What an episode. I hope you got plenty of information out of this and got lots of value out of it. And if you didn't go back and listen again and just pull out that amazing wisdom that Tracy's giving on how to grow your business using Clubhouse or how to get value out of Clubhouse for your business. If you'd like to connect with Tracy, just head along to thedigitalguide.com.au. That's thedigitalguide.com.au. Or if you're in Brisbane, head along to Tracy's book launch. She's launching her new book, The End of Technophobia, A Practical Guide to Digitizing Your Business. She's launching that on Thursday, May 27th at the Brisbane Convention Center. That starts at 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. So duck in there on the way to get your book. Koshi's actually going to be there. So head along and check it out. Like I said, if you want to get in touch uh, with Tracy, head along to thedigitalguide.com.au and check out her new book, The End of Technophobia. All right. That's it from us here today. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.